Tower Inferno was a film ahead of its time as far as combining all the different types of special effects out there. This is before anything you're doing today. No digital, no super duper this or that. We're just the old fashioned way of doing it. Where you combine the live action to the CG world, computer graphic world, and you also using miniatures. You combine all the tools that you need to create a great film. You had the concept of building or making the audience believe that we were building or had just completed building the world's tallest office building. Yet another landmark for this great city. And that that building on the night of its opening catches fire. It's about a whole tower on fire and people having to deal with problems that are occurring and uh, have to come up with solutions. Here's our problem. The fire is lapping here, going up through the window. It was an involved picture in that it had a number of units. There was the special effects unit, there was the action unit, there was the principal photography unit, and each of these had to be designed carefully so that they would stand up by themselves and that they could be properly blended one to another. I looked for the best of the effects people, and Bill Abbott, who's been with me for almost 20 years and has won eight Academy Awards for special effects, was my number one choice because we knew there were going to be an unusual amount of effects. Special effects supervisor main job is, is to not only create all the effects and, and hire a proper team of guys to do all the effects for you, but also to keep safety in mind the whole time and also to work editorially with the uh, stunt coordinator, the director, and in the editorial room, cut together and tell the story. Fire is a funny thing to photograph. It can look awfully fake or it can look darn good. Also, what people realize, there's many different colors in fire. We shot tests. We had a terrific special effect today. You had the miniature unit, which L.B. Abbott, Bill Abbott, who was a former director of effects at Fox and went into retirement. Irwin wouldn't let him retire, kept getting him back. And he was going to handle all the miniature buildings and we had miniature helicopters. Hey! <laughs> to tackle something like Tower Inferno is, is actually so immense that you have to basically take the problem and break it down scene by scene, small pieces at a time, so that it doesn't seem to be so overwhelming. What floor do you keep your plans on? 79, my office. That's good. That's two floors below the fire. When I did the storyboards, I would sit down with Bill Kreber, the production designer, War Press, and the art director, or L.B. Abbott, the uh, special effects person, who had to kind of match what uh, Paul may have been doing in special effects, such as the sequence where Robert Wagner or Susan Flannery are trapped in that suite. Turn your face away. There was a sequence where Robert and I were standing at the door, and there's supposed to be a big explosion, you know, and they had the camera there, and Erwin was directing. And he said, OK, I'm going to clap my hands, and you'll have this big reaction. So I said to him, well, that's it? Going to clap your hands? And he said, yeah. I said, well, don't you have something that'll make some sort of a sound effect, you know, that we can really be startled by? They brought this machine in that made this incredible noise, which then scared the holy hell out of me. <laughs> Every film has its own problems. In the uh, case of Towering Inferno, uh, you were dealing with various different fire effects, explosions, water effects, with actors running around, with miniature buildings, the big sets and everything, and you had to marry it together. And a lot of the scenes were filmed against the blue screen, which would be composited later on with a miniature version of the building, which uh, Van der Veer Photo Effects under L.B. Abbott's direction composited. Of the miniature buildings, they had uh, two different sizes. They did the upper uh, 30 stories an inch and a half scale, uh, which was about 65 feet high. And then they had the entire building, which was half inch scale, and that was about 70 feet high. You can enhance the, the, the building by shooting up and so you really don't know exactly 
uh, what's the, the total height distance of it, but you're looking up into a, a, a night sky. Bill Abbott was the special effects cameraman. He did the blue screen work, Hold on. and it was quite a bit of it. The elevator shafts were blue screen, and the, the shots out the window, that was blue screen down there. It was done so well, put together with the live action, that your mind, as the audience sees it, really believes that you are there and you're experiencing exactly what, what those people are, are experiencing at the time. I never thought that a thing like this could happen. I don't think you could, you could say at that moment you thought you were ahead of time because you were doing what you do at that time. Uh, we didn't know what was coming. I sure didn't. And the production of Iron Head Pictures, I'm, it, I just, I'm amazed yet. It was 30 years ago, and I look at this picture, I think, my God, look what we did. There were the thousands of craftsmen, skilled people, who spent an entire lifetime learning the secrets of making motion pictures. I'm able to bring them together and do it. There's no false sense of humility here because I'm not a humble man and uh, I know my contribution, but I also know the great contribution made by all the other people, those that are named as stars and those people who are in the background. And to them I owe very special applause.